Hey guys, Philosopher here. Welcome to FGC Philosophy. And one quick thing before we get into this episode is uh, I feel like I need to have a trigger warning, perhaps, because uh, I'm talking about some topics that are um, maybe sensitive to people. And I just want to give you a heads up that uh, if you're going to listen to this podcast, please come with an open mind. Uh, if you're someone who is offended by opposing opinions, I suggest maybe clicking off of this episode, uh, not to be condescending or insulting, just because uh, I want to have a conversation about topics that I don't fully know about. Uh, that I am very passionate about, but maybe don't know all the information. And I want to share my perspective, share my frustrations, but also try to understand things about the areas that are frustrating me. So if you're not someone who's willing to talk about the topics that make you upset, that make you nervous, that make you mad or scared, uh, perhaps this isn't for you. Again, I fully welcome people who disagree with me, who want to tell me their point of view. I welcome that. I want to have a conversation. That's the point of this podcast. Always has been, always will be. So if you do disagree, if you have some strong feelings or opinions, feel free to share them. But please do it in a civil way so that we can all grow together as a group. That said, I have my guest, some guy on here that I've known since I've been in college, one of my best friends, and this has been a great way to reconnect with him. So uh, neither of us are necessarily experts in some of the areas we're talking about, but I think it's important for everyone to have a dialogue about it so that we can see what we do and don't know, how we feel about things, and help each other grow. So that said, let's get into this week's episode. I mean, I'm guilty of only clicking on the articles articles that I want to read, which I guess, you know, there's, duh, obviously you're not going to go out of your way to, uh, to listen to something that's going to bore you, but there is some merit in listening to stuff that is different than what you hear day to day. You know, even, even if it's not, if it, if it doesn't change up the way you feel or the way you act daily basis, breaking yourself out of that shell from time to time can can put things into perspective. Yeah. I think it also gives you respect for other cultures, I'll say. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say just culture because... Uh, I, I don't know how to say what that means. It could be like a race. It could be, you know, religion. There's so many different micro groups of people now that uh, their cultures are just way more diverse. And you kind of lose context for why they are the way they are. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're growing and we're diversifying. But as we diversify, our morals are going to be diverse as well. And so it's... It seems like a lot of people aren't conscious about that as they as they become more diverse they start to see other parties as, as immoral and i think you know that's worth a conversation for sure but um i don't know i don't think it's being handled well enough or accommodated well enough politically yeah <clears throat> so what so what is it that has gotten you aggravated at this point uh, specific or not even specifically just like broad strokes like what is it that you can say is like not okay the lack the gross lack of accountability that I see from the leadership in our country is probably the biggest thing yeah yeah, and I, can, I can agree with that. There's, I mean, there's a lot within that. You know, there's so many other smaller things that that really adds up. But I feel like if you if you fix the accountability system, a lot of the other issues that I'm mad about as well that other people are mad <clears> about <throat> probably start to get fixed. You know, right? Yeah, if people are made or held accountable for their actions, it, it's like um, the whole reason we have a jail system in the first place is because it's supposed to keep people accountable right Mm -hmm. like it's not it's not really so much to punish the people that have i mean it it does it punishes the people who have done wrong but the idea is to be incentive not to do that sort of stuff regardless of your of your stature yeah regardless of how how much money you have in order to get out of said situation right but that, that clearly isn't the case that isn't the reality that we live in poorer people are in jail longer you know that's 
that's not equality. That's not true legal fairness. You know, people right. are, are getting screwed over depending on how much money they have. And it's, they don't have enough money to come back from those kinds of situations as efficiently as someone who's rich. Uh, so why are they getting penalized more with less ability to earn their own money uh, while people who already have a lot of money are given more time to be able to earn more money? Yeah. At least that's the way I see it, at least in my head. So it's just, it's pretty frustrating. That's like that's what's got me so messed up is that like that plus I would say the other half of it is how we're handling it as a culture as a community as as people who have a lot to be grateful for um, we're finding some way to make a cloth political uh, we finding some way to not have accurate information on anything it, it seems like you you're crazy if you don't trust a specific source of information, but at the same time, every single source of information has been accused of being uh, not truthful. Like every major media outlet has by somebody been accused of being not true. And they have indeed been proven like to, to post not true things. So it's the, I can't trust the source of information on a consistent basis because some of them are gonna give some pretty bad information because mistakes do happen, but also people clearly just want to get the news first and they're willing to be wrong to get the news out there first. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just hard to, to trust. It, it feels right. like and you're crazy if you trust <clears throat> just one media outlet and you're like not skeptical. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's also like, we reward that system of just get it out there. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's rewarded through ad revenue, through like clickbait sort of stuff. Just yeah. The fact that if it incites a feeling in someone, they'll they'll look at it, they'll click on it, they'll um they'll take time out of their day to look at your thing so you can make money off of the ad. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot of people who are like rage baiters, I guess they're called. You know, people who know they're. It's not like especially you know youtubers are notorious for uh t making content that they don't truly believe because they're kind of a caricature of themselves you know almost yeah. like if you're a youtuber you're almost always playing a, car a caricature of who you truly are uh you kind of can't help it it's supposed to be like the best version of you or, or a different version of you that isn't who you truly are or an extension of who you are like an over exaggeration of something that you might believe uh and you know the I don't want to like name any specific YouTubers or be biased, but I've, I've seen both parties do it. I've even seen a debate between two of them um, and they use the same exact tactics that I saw in, you know, in the debate uh, um, and not just on the Republican side, but on the uh, liberal side as well. You know, it, they were both using these underhanded tactics uh, rather than actually debating each other and, and trying to understand the other point of view. They're trying to make the other one look bad while also trying to make them uh, their point of view, the right and justice, like, instead of using facts they try to use morals to make it seem like they have the high ground and they're, and they're uh, the right one and it's just kind of it's frustrating that we, I just watched a really good debate between two uh, I'm just going to say philosophers uh, and it was pretty refreshing they did get heated uh, but they would pull themselves back and they'd apologize when they were wrong and it was refreshing to see like I would see them get frustrated and want to take jabs at each other and then they'd kind of clarify where they were coming from and they were like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, all right, I get it. Okay. You know, and they'd reset, and they'd, they'd talk about the differences, and, and you'd get a better understanding of what each person was thinking, and the other person would do the same. Super refreshing, but we don't have that here. You mean they didn't talk about each other's families? and, and <sighs> No, surprisingly. Past, past, like, uh, like people aren't allowed to change. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. I, I feel like to look at... All right, so there's a I'm, i have mixed feelings about like the history of politicians right mm -hmm. so if you look at someone who's like has changed their mind on issues a lot of people call them like flip floppers yeah but in reality that's like that's learning and growing as a person yes i feel like if you're if you're in politics and you've had the right answer from the very get-go like that 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 makes no sense to me that you've always known better than 
anything. I, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy a politician that has never changed their mind in their life. Crazy <clears throat> people, you know, who aren't willing to um, accept new information, which usually yeah. those kinds of people are the ones that uh, are not good for us. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's usually like the old racist guy. It's like he hasn't changed his opinion on black people. <laughs> you know, that's that's not what we want. We want people who are going to grow. So it's like, I do get the argument that flip-flopping on certain issues is, uh, it makes them less seem less trustworthy. You know, I, I see the argument. Uh, and I think there are people who do agree f- with policies for corrupt reasons as well. Like they'll, you know, for favors, stuff like that. I think there are people who e- exploit that system, unfortunately. But I don't, I don't think that every single person that changes their opinion is, is terrible and nor should we treat them as such. Or use it as a debate ammo when someone changes. Like, that shouldn't be an expectation that they're going to, oh, he's going to bring that up and, like, talk about how he changed his mind. Like, what? okay, but can we have an actual conversation? Why did he change his mind? Is there any good evidence? Why can't that turn to a conversation of, hey, you changed your mind on this. Why did you change your mind? Uh, because if you let them talk about it, they can hang themselves, you know, unless they find a good way to lie about that too. But they're, if they're going to lie, they're going to lie either way. But like you learn, maybe there was some information about like you know, this bridge wasn't stable or we weren't using the right kind of material or people were slacking off or we found like this money was a sitting here not doing anything. So we repurposed it somewhere else and I learned more about it. I was wrong about something. Like why is admitting you're wrong about something a bad thing? Uh, it, it seems like ever since grade school, like bad grades, being wrong on tests, you're, you're, you're almost forced to feel like being wrong is bad. Failing is bad. Like that's just how it feels like it was for me. Like if you fail, you're a mess up, you know, you're, you're, you're not a good yeah. person. Um, and I feel like our politicians act like that. They act like, you know, they're not as bad as Trump, <laughs> you know, who has to pat himself in the back every two seconds. But like they do the same thing where they talk about what they did. Um, or, you know, the media does it for him, but yeah. they're not willing to admit when they're wrong. And it just seems like a whole controversy when someone's wrong about something and they have to like deny it and walk off and the they, they dodge the question. They don't want to answer it. Like, why can't we talk about why you were wrong? Why can't we learn from your mistakes? Why can't we all benefit from how you were wrong? What's the big deal? You know, it's mm-hmm. what's equally as frustrating to me is that we don't see that as an expectation already you know in my mind this should be the expectation but it doesn't seem like we as a as a society as voting people we don't care enough to make that happen or maybe we don't know how to have to make that happen but it just seems like the quality of communication that we get within politicians and how they talk to us um and how they don't truly give us anything substantial to work with like intellectually or, or philosophically um, it sucks, but I, I get why they do it because they would lose the vote if they talk too much or if they were too cerebral because a lot of people don't want to hear all of that. They just want to hear the highlights and stuff. So, yeah. you know, what do they do? They want to win, you know, winners want to win. So they use tactics that win. So it's like a salesman isn't going to use a tactic that doesn't work. They're trying to make the sale. They're trying to make ends meet. That's the life that he has. Uh, He's going to use what makes money for him. So we, we have this set up, and I'm not talking about necessarily capitalism per se, but just um, this fear of failure mixed with everything else I just talked about, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, man, it really puts us into a weird spot in the world, doesn't it? Yeah, in a lot of different ways. It's um uh, one thing that's been very interesting to watch is the opinion of white people as a as a whole as a country. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how to word this because it's, it's really really weird as a as a black person to like explain this and, and and also not try to be like offensive or anything like that, but just like try to be from my point of view what it seems like is happening like just with the opinion of of uh with caucasians you know yeah um so it's gonna take a lot to offend me because i i know you you know what i mean like i know yeah. that your intention like i know that your intention is to communicate not to uh not to specifically hurt me because of of anything you know what i mean like mm-hmm. so so put it out there yeah 
Um, so for context, I feel like it's important to give you my point of view a little bit and be short about it. But so obviously I grew up black. I grew up in a world where I was, you know, picked on by every creed that I've come across. Whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, adults, peers, family. Like I've been bullied every single year of my grade school life. There was never a year in, in like from first or from the like kindergarten all the way up where I didn't experience some form of bullying for a majority of my life. Uh, so I, I secretly hated basically everybody because I, I couldn't trust any walk of life because I knew that everyone, regardless of who they were as a person, their ethnicity, their religion, could be a terrible person and do terrible things. And, you know, I was very depressed for most of that lifestyle. So, like, being black was a huge part of it. Being big was a huge part of it. Being big and black was a huge part of it. Being big and black and nice was a huge part of why I got picked on. Like, all those factors were, were motivators for a lot of different people. You know, I was a target by different creeds for whatever they were trying to get out of it. So I had to literally, you know, like, physical alteration, altercations. Like, not just being picked on, but, like, having to defend myself physically for most of grade school until I moved, learned karate, and I still got into physical alterations, but I wasn't uh, afraid to hurt them because I knew how to hurt, like subdue them without hurting them. Um, and I knew how to protect myself because I just, I didn't want to hurt people. I've never had that desire to just want to hurt people. Uh, I do think, you know, I love martial arts, but to get back on topic, you know, I, I learned that because I'm black and different, uh, I can be picked on by white people and, and black people and experience that. So I've always been very observant as an outsider looking in, an outsider to the black community because they wouldn't accept me because I was black and different, uh, an outsider to the white community because I was kind of an anomaly to them because I was black and different. Uh, and just seeing how people reacted to me differently from other black people who acted stereotypically. Like I was always very self-aware of that. So... Yeah. I was always very self-aware of the opinion of white people. They were just like the, the default character. Like in a video game, it's like the the white person would be the default character. And that's just, just kind of how I accepted it. I was like a, a second character. You know, my, my race made me lesser than. And it wasn't like something I actively thought about. It was just something that society has, you know, the black guy always dies in, in scary movies. You know, the you might get a yeah. black character. Like these are the representation of my race wasn't really there, so I didn't think of myself as the standard of an American, um, you know, a minority. Right. That word. So, anyways, so observing that this this last couple of years have the opinion of white people have changed and shifted and gotten very cynical, and it's like you know white people are terrible and like just white people are saying these things about themselves. It's not like black people saying it because they've been saying it to each other for years already you know uh, I, I grew up in that environment where my mom like made me very self-aware that of, of slavery the, the the history of of black people and stuff like that and how uh, we were treated and so i knew i was always very smart like my mom always told me that on an individual level uh, anybody can be a good person like regardless, you know, she's known gay, she's known straights. Like even though she's like homophobic, she she's had gay friends, or was. She's not homophobic anymore. Um, she's matured a lot. But you know, she talked about being homophobic, you know, being morally against somebody, but still accepting them as a friend. Now I thought that was like a contradiction. I never understood that until uh, I had my own, you know, gay friend and and got to be really really good friends with him and, and get comfortable with like people who are homosexual. I was like, oh, you know, our mutual friend actually. And yeah. I learned a lot about that. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's an eye-opener. I never knew this, this kind of stuff. And I, I always accepted them, even though I think at the time I may have been, like, somewhat Christian. Maybe I, uh, maybe I had undeconverted by then. But anyways, yeah, I, um, I was raised to, to think that way. And so observing all of this has been fascinating where, you know, now this year, it just seems like white people are, are terrible or are capable of doing horrible things. And, like, just a lot of information about the history of... of like how bad it was for black people is starting to come out um and it's like it's almost like having a conspiracy theory and then being proven right because it's like as black people you feel like there are people out to get you just because of the color of your skin like it feels like that and that's just like a natural state that you're raised to believe as, as a black person it's smart for a parent to make their kid think that like me and my son are going to have conversations about how people are may target him simply because of the color of the skin and also because he's mixed um yeah 
it, it would be ill-advised of me to not warn him so that when he does come across it, he knows how to deal with it. Um, but now I feel like that's happening to uh, white people in some way. Like, the people who are our age, who are having kids and raising their kids, you know, they're, they're talking about this. I have friends that are, you know, they're very pro-Black Lives Matter, and mm-hmm. um, but also, like, very cynical against their own race. And it's just super fascinating to, to see that. You know, it's, in some ways, it's I don't want anybody to hate themselves because of the color of the skin because I know how bad that feels. Uh, but at the same time, I understand how they feel because, you know, I, before I've been embarrassed of, of my race before because I've, some of the stereotypes that are synonymous with black people aren't good stereotypes. But there are people who um, <laughs> are those stereotypes sometimes. But at the same time, you know, I, I just don't want anybody to be embarrassed of themselves just because of the color of their skin or, or hate themselves. That just that sucks. You know, it sucks that situation is even a thing. Uh, history is history, so that stuff did actually happen. But the people who are good people, regardless of their race, are, are good people. So it's like the whole situation is 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 kind of frustrating, sad, um, eye opening because it makes me feel like now they see this stuff is real. You know, it's very vindicating in some ways, but it sucks that it's true because it's like you don't want there to be terrible people in our police system. That sucks because now we have to fix it. And how do we even do that? Um, but right. it's it, the the What's the what's the saying? The wool has been moved, removed from the eyes, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that whole transition over the last. I mean, it's been before Trump. I think when Obama got in office, it started a lot more, where like more people became accepting of black people, like and understood that they're equals in in the society of America. You know, I feel like for uh, for black people, that was a moment where we finally got some semblance of equality in America because we, we made it to the tippy top that we could possibly make. Now, I say we because, you know, that's just nature of, of like, anybody who wants to um, associate a group. You know, it's like a team. You know, the the yeah. Super Bowl, we won. You know, it's uh, baseball, we won. Uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, and I, 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 I can see a lot of that. You know, obviously, I don't have the same the background, but coming from the opposite background I, I can see and remember mm. people in my family even ha- being racist being brought up in a way that didn't make sense to me even even at a young age I very early on realized that like that's just hate and I don't understand where it's coming from okay like, I and I've always mm. been of the mind of trusting someone until they give me a reason not to <clears throat> and I just in general you know what I mean like I, I don't think that I've ever um, I've ever really been given a reason to judge someone based off of their race I see good and bad everywhere you know what I mean and, and not to say that I'm that I'm I'm not guilty of some some action that may may be racist because a lot of times I feel like you don't even see that you don't even know when you're being racist if if it's so ingrained in, in society, you get what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah, I, I totally get it. Uh, but I, like <laughs> to be willingly and knowingly racist, I don't understand it. I don't understand where it comes from. I I, I just don't get it. Yeah. <clears throat> I I. I mean, depending on your point of view, like some people don't think that black people can be racist. I, I do believe that black people can be racist. So I remember growing up in that world where like, for me, it was very, very common to have animosity towards just white people in general. Like that's just how you're, you're raised. So from the, like, from my perspective, I know, I guess I don't know. I know why though, because of the history. Right, there's a history as to why. So the anger is justified. That doesn't mean that, you know, your actions are justified, but like the I understand why I was raised that way, why most of the people around me of that color were raised that way. Um I, I mean I have to imagine maybe not motivated by anger, but probably some sort of point of view that, you know, sometimes when you lose your culture, you lose the context. And obviously this has been happening since before America was established. You know, so this is very de-seated where I feel like 
From my point of view, white people have had slaves for a very long time. And so it was an expectation to have the mindset of like black people being lesser than because they they literally did have a status of, of less than. They were treated less than. They could be. It was acceptable to be treated that way. Uh, and but it's only in recent history that that's starting to change, right? Like how when did when did you get the right to vote? It's you know it's within the past like I gotta fact check that hundred years. That's uh I don't, I don't I don't know what the actual date is. That's uh that's probably pretty terrible of me, but I don't know either. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, Google I mean, that. <laughs> if that makes me racist, then I guess I'm also sexist because I don't know when women got the right to vote either. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it was uh, 1964. Uh, I had I had to double check that because I'm terrible with dates personally. The Civil Rights so, Act. So I mean, so it's yeah. Barely over 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a long time ago, you know. Like, and again, people forget that. Like your your granddad didn't have the right for a while, right? Like he like mm, I probably imagine, not. Or your great granddad for sure. I know my gra I remember my grandmother talking about segregation. Yeah. Like I remember her talking about water fountains and stuff like that, and I like. I don't know, you, you don't grow up in that world, but you hear about that world almost like it's a story. It almost <clears> seems <throat> unbelievable, but you know it, it did happen because there's like pictures and stuff that they can show you. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I mean, I feel like we, we grew up in completely different worlds, you know, because there's information that, you know, it's kind of like the, the saying history is written by the victor. So there's just a lot of things that the average person doesn't learn in, you know, in a history book about how yeah. uh, you need a lot of context to understand the anger of a black person. Like, if you don't see, if you don't know the history, the true history of what has happened over the last, less, you know, couple of generations, you know, our grandparents, our parents, how they were treated, uh, you can't understand why they're so mad about certain things and why they're so ready to fix certain issues. So they just have, like, literally no context. It's like a, a lot of Southern racism is just, it's like you're, you're trying to solve a problem, but you don't have the information. Like, you can't build a car if you don't have a schematic and you don't, you're just going to put together nothing. And it's probably going to do more harm than good if you don't yeah. have the like, proper information to, to make the attempt to do the thing that you're trying to do. Uh, and so, like, trying to understand a black person with, like, literal ignorance where you just don't understand the, his the true history and you grow up with the wrong history of what happened, it's like you already have this dis disadvantage of thinking about black people as lesser than because of years and years of ingrained thinking that slavery is the right thing to do uh they're gonna grow up with some sort of sort of weird like superiority complex towards uh black people is like that's how i logically see it uh, i like to do thought experiments to see like how over generations a culture can develop and the way like to, to go back to your point of like not knowing why someone could be racist it's like from my point of view you're they were trained to think that black people were property and you yeah. guys are still suffering like not just like you you haven't really been shackled by that because you've been my friend since college and like uh you've been the least you've been the most accepting person to me that i've known so despite your environment you you didn't adhere to that so it's like anybody can break this and i'm sure over many different generations there have been people but they probably were shamed and made to look like crazy people whenever they were like hey let's help these people out you know because the majority wins um yeah. so anyways it's like you fast forward a couple of generations and maybe yeah you lose the right to you lose your property what happens if like if a law passed and now you lose the right to have your computer like to have internet how would you feel yeah i'd be i'd be furious right and so i i'm not saying by any means that black people are property because obviously i'm still i still have some like I'm not mad at the people now. I'm just mad at the history of it. But like, I, I still have those emotions. But my point in this, this uh, hold on. <sighs> my point in this thought experiment is that I, I want to actually cause the visual. Like, I want people to think about the visual of like thinking about different generations passing down their culture, and then all of a sudden this life event happens for them and with their point of view. It's like they lost their property. They're not going to have a good opinion of of black people. They're going to be like. I was screwed over by the government, I lost my property, and now these guys are running free, doing whatever it is they, they you know, they're thinking their racist thoughts about black people, right? Uh, they passed that anger down, 
you know and their kids yeah. might not know why their parents were mad at black people they just know to be mad at black people for some reason like that's all it takes is like watching your parents get mad at a group of people and hearing the dumb racist stuff they say the racism is probably going to be a little bit weaker and the context isn't going to be as good but it also can be just as dangerous because they have no clue why they're afraid of black people they're not willing to even learn right so like you you have this this these people are were our politicians you know some of the politicians lost their slaves they're still politicians <laughs> they're not out of not, not all of them were kicked out of office you know some of them were on the side that won that did have to give up their slaves so maybe they switch parties because they disagreed with this life event but they are they're politicians they're smarter than just i'm angry i'm going to like quit the government no they're going to try to play the game and get what they want you know it, yeah. and they're still fighting for for slavery i'm sure in some different ways i'm sure i could find some documents on like how people were trying to reinstate slavery at some point but just it failed so those people are still there having kids and now we are where we are right where we know it's wrong we don't know why it's wrong some of us still believe it's okay to be racist towards black people and that's that's just one example of many different issues not just black people but just you know marijuana was another example like i don't want to get too much into the specifics but it's starting to get legalized now you know there's people still fighting it um mm -hmm. we've demonized it over the years we've made you know propaganda reefer madness if you've never seen that documentary i uh, highly recommend oh, that <laughs> you know that one's a trip <laughs> i see what you did there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's just we've been <sighs> that thought experiment to me is very very useful um again to your point of like how someone can be racist uh but just understanding somebody is like I, I love the whole point is having conversations and learning from someone else's point of view it's like you know i guess before i get any further it's like what do you what do you think about that thought experiment would that be accurate would you think there'd be like a different way of looking at that or is that just like outlandish um no i think that that's that's a pretty decent one like actually look at you're, you you mean specifically like how you would feel if someone took away your property right like that's yeah like i'm not saying either one of us would be for slavery or anything like that. i'm just saying that like if you if you put yourself in the shoes of someone at the time of you know 19 not 1964 well 1964 and then also when slavery was abolished you know during that time uh and having this happen and how that racism could go from having some context you know of having a superiority complex of, of uh you know having property over black people to having to give them some sort of rights um to uh, like you know their politics your politicians have kids um they their kids see that black people now have the right to vote and just seeing this power you're supposed to have over another race slowly being like taken away and like passing that anger on down to your kid and how like you're not going to explain everything maybe they don't get the full context of the history they just know they're supposed to be angry at, at black people or, or whatever race you know this isn't just an exclusive to america it's happened in other cultures as well other countries as well yeah i mean I, I think that's a pretty decent um pretty decent thought experiment it definitely brings up um so, right, so i've watched uh several shows recently that go like involving like time travel and stuff and like there's a few like so doctor who for example and umbrella academy oh dude Umbrella Academy is um, so good. I have the comic. If you want to borrow that? Oh, uh, uh, maybe. Is it is it a lot different than the show? It's different enough, um, but equally as good. Like, uh, as someone who read the comic first and then saw the show, um, I thought the show was just as good, if not better, and but just had like some different things that I don't know why they went that route, but it wasn't bad per se. Yeah. Yeah. But so like uh so you probably know what I'm talking about like the in the second season where they go back in time and the I don't remember her name the uh not number 6 or 7 the uh the girl like she's like part of like the equal rights movement and yeah. Oh, rumor. She, yeah, yeah, rumor. Yeah. Um so she um she experiences some pretty like well not just her but like anyone around her is like experiencing some pretty ridiculous like racism yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. and like i remember feeling like cringy just watching it being like oh god like, oh interesting the the fact that like 
these are the people that represent my past you know what i mean like mm -hmm. yeah that's rough um no it's 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 not even it's just like <laughs> it just made me uncomfortable which i'm you know i'm 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 glad it did i'm glad that that sort of stuff makes me uncomfortable mm, because point, it's yeah. not it's not something that i'm comfortable i wouldn't be comfortable if i if i saw someone treating someone like that today you know what i mean mm -hmm. like and i hope that it instills that into other people as well like you shouldn't feel comfortable watching that yeah i i do like that kind of stuff like i don't i don't like that it exists but i like that it exposes what truly happened you know with some context as well from from a different point of view and not just like it's not just hey we were oppressed by you you know because i don't feel like if i walked up to you and i was like hey you, you oppressed me that's not necessarily i mean it's not ro a wrong statement well uh, i'm trying to think of a better situation but like basically just outright saying you're oppressed by somebody doesn't really fix the situation but giving them context however possible is usually pretty effective when it happens uh it's not going to like always change somebody's mind but i think just giving context is always a, a start to to change you know yeah hmm. i think we lack a lot of that here uh context yeah or... uh, in america we lack a lot of context. Yeah. Or I think whenever we have friction, you know, whether it be, I think the LGBTQ plus movement was, uh, is a, a situation like that where a large number of people in places of power lack context as to what these people want, how, like what, what their challenges are. And like, at the same time, uh, the results are mixed because of how the movement um, sometimes can handle it online and, and like how they don't, you know, the the solution. How do I word this? I don't know if I want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> 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 I might, I might uh, save that for another conversation. I was going to say that might be a different, different night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, oh, context. So I, I think that a lot of people lack lack context for different groups of people. Uh, I think if there was a way to have a conversation where we could give more context or try to look for more context before we made our judgments, that would be really, really, really helpful. You know? Yeah, can we just have telepathy already? We're getting there. We're getting I there. Mean, you know what I mean? Like, or some form of it, like telepathic empathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Um, there's a, uh, I want to say it's a either Tool or Pussifer song that starts out. Um, it's just like a conversation, or this guy's talking about a conversation he had with some guy at like Burning Man or something. And at the end of it, the guy like grabs him pulls him in close and says we'll never know world peace until three people can look each other in the eye simultaneously um, <laughs> what yeah so it's it's a little out there but like it, it got me thinking like so what does that, what does that mean exactly um does it mean like people actually looking each other in the eye or just seeing eye to eye you know what i mean like uh mm. Like real eye to eye, not like I'm, I'm listening to respond. More so, I'm listening to experience mm -hmm. and to understand. So I, uh, it, that's kind of a tangent, I know, uh, <laughs> um, but it does bring up the question of how we are all locked inside of our own brain and we can only have the best guess of what's happening uh, to everyone else and I feel like a lot of people lack the ability to even question that you know what I mean like that there is the other Mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like the narcissistic viewpoint of 
here's like an uh, over exaggeration of that. Uh, uh, well, not even over exaggeration because that actually happens. It's like when you you ever work in retail or customer uh, service. A little, not much. You, I think you, you just <laughs> like McGonagall's and such. Oh uh, yeah. So you ever have an issue where someone complains to you about something that they complained to somebody else that you worked with and expect you to know it like just magically? Uh, not from a coworker, but from like customers and stuff. I can kind of see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. So like a customer comes in and is like complains to the to front desk, and the front desk is like, okay. Um, somehow whatever happens and they get sent to you and now they're like they know they saw that nobody like communicated with you except for hey he'll be over here but she says the same things to you and expects you to already know it and gets mad when <laughs> you don't know that information like yeah. it, it's that's an over exaggeration of what you're talking about where it just seems like people communicate in a way where it's like you you should already know what I'm thinking in my head like almost before I even say it and if you don't then like there's something wrong with you or you're wrong or you're a terrible person because you don't agree with me. I don't know if that's yeah. what you're getting at. Uh, I mean, it's, it is definitely down the same thought path of mm. just people being stuck in their own head and never, never willing to admit or to try to understand that they that life exists outside of their own melon. Yeah. If it's not about me, it ain't for me. <laughs> or, you know, something, something stupid like that. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. It's such a challenge watching people, like, obviously I'm stressed out and I'm, I don't have the best of uh, productive habits right now. But at the same time, I, I see people just, their eyes glued to the poles. And... Yeah. It, I, I'm not judging them, but I just it is to me. It seems like it's, you're you're willingly putting yourself on an emotional roller coaster for one of two outcomes. Instead, I don't understand why people aren't just like doing their own thing and uh, you know keeping their mind clean and then going back to it once it, there's actual information. Because uh, I feel like most people that are watching it just know it's going to take a while before. Uh, the results are tallied in. I mean, we've had to mail a bunch of them in, and plus, like, the lines have been super long, so there's no way they can count these things for a while. Uh, plus, with how Trump has been acting and demanding recounts, he's going to be doing that for a while. So, I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm being the pessimistic one, but I think it's going to take a while, and I don't see any reason of just, like, watching rice boil, you know? Yeah. That, I mean, I, honestly, I'm guilty of watching it just honestly i think it's it's out of like frustration and just wanting it to be over it's been i mean i feel like it's been hmm. one of the worst years in my life <laughs> for one not not even necessarily because of things that are going on with me personally but just like the state of the world seems worse now than it ever has to me and that may be just me overthinking everything and or whatnot but like i don't i don't like the state of the world you know like it's or i don't like the state of our portion of the world as yeah. i should say i can't really say the whole world is terrible but mm -hmm. yeah from my viewpoint that's looking pretty rough yeah i definitely can say america is you know i'm I have to imagine that some countries aren't willing to admit how bad things are, so I'm not 100% sold that every country that are listed are doing as well as they say they are, because sometimes there's corrupt governments that want to deny and make it look like they're stronger than they really are, because uh, they don't want to get invaded. They're smaller than us, you know? Yeah. So I, I think that a lot of countries are, are would tactically be willing to do that, and I I wouldn't fault them. I mean, it, it I disagree with the implementation, but at the same time, I... I don't know. It's not my country. I can't tell them what to do. Uh, and it, just, it is what it is. You know, it's not a... Uh, I don't know. It just... It, it doesn't bother me that if someone would do that, I, I almost see that as an expectation that countries would do that. But anyways... Um, hmm. You mean exaggerate how they're doing with the... with with uh, COVID? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. But yeah, our it does feel like our world 
is that way. I don't... I'm trying very hard now to work on my own, like, health. You know, getting my sleeping back in order, getting my meditation and exercising back in order. Trying to get those things and be more uh, present for my son. Stuff like that. And I feel like now more than ever, like, just personal growth or whatever you want to call it, just self discipline <laughs> i think self-discipline more than anything else is incredibly important so like um i know everyone seems to be just willing to say what comes to mind and just mad mad online saying things and honestly people it seems like people have like some sort of permanent road rage mm. it's like for like politics yeah, it's like mm-hmm. vote, vote rage. New, uh, <laughs> new term. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rage voting. <laughs> yeah. It does feel that way. Uh, I would say that I feel that way. I'm pretty... I'm grumpy for different reasons than most people, but I am still very, like, just... Uh, furious at the situation that's happening, that it's unfolding in front of me. And I'm, I'm angry at both parties, you know? So maybe maybe I'm doubly angry. <laughs> maybe that's where all my frustration was. <laughs> um. Um, so, one, one thing that frustrates the crap out of me is some of the people, like, so, I won't name names, because, you know, that's, that's rude. <laughs> um, <laughs> But some of the people that I know and have hung out with and actually enjoyed myself around are now just like so on the opposite side of the fence that they're making enemies. If that makes, you know, like, I'm, I, I feel like the difference between my side, like from me to these other people, is that they are willingly trying to make enemies out of the people that don't agree with them kind of reminds me of my college days a little bit i feel like there were certain people who were very like anarchist or uh, or anti-establishment that that thought that that was a solution to solving problems or just like seemed like they were looking for some sort of fight i don't know i i feel like i came across a lot of people who had that mentality not just in college like in high school as well but just like I, i think of a few uh a few people that um, were prominent, like I guess during that that time, that were like seemed very I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? combative. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But go on. No, I mean I just they, they when I was there when I was in Philly, we were there, and you know we had different opinions and everything, but like that's fine. Mm. People can exist and be friends. But, like, I see their Facebook post, and now it's just, like, post after post of just, like, political stuff. And, like, if you support this person, then you're trash or or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Huh. That's really weird. And I get it, but, like, you know, I, I I feel somewhat the same way about my side of the fence. But not to the point to where I would alienate someone, if that makes any sense. Like I, I wouldn't not go over to someone's house because they support the other candidate, mm. unless they were, you know, supporting him so much that I'm no longer welcome there. Yeah, I you know I can. There are certain arguments I can see why people would alienate somebody, and but there's also a lot that I feel like there aren't. Because like, so say you had family member who were like came out to be like white supremacist. You know, it's like yeah. I I don't know if I, I'm not going to judge you either way if you do, but you may be less inclined. You know, or if, if like my parents were like not my parents, like some family member was part of some militant group to want to like attack the government I don't think I'd be for that 
you know i'm not yeah so i don't think i'd want to like be around that because also it would come back on me and i'm just like i'm not part of that i don't want to be associated with that and right. luckily that's not a situation for me but like i can i can imagine you know maybe that's an over exaggeration but there are times where it's just like oh this person i don't feel like i don't know there's so many topics i feel like are, are triggering to certain people that i don't know which one to pick but just like i know abortion is a very strong topic and i won't get into my personal point of view but it seems like that has been a topic that both parties have been willing to alienate friends and family for over you know that's just like one of many but i, I yeah I, I don't feel like i don't know what i think part of the issue for me is like what is what is wrong with having a conversation and working it out you know why isn't that the expectation of how to interact with each other but also how hard is it to just like not is it so bad that you can't talk about it and maybe it is yes for some people i sub- i guess it has to be yes um but i don't personally get it you know yeah because mm-hmm. I, I i do have friends that that have parents that are on the opposite end of the uh opposite end of the spectrum you know and so they talk about how that's an issue and you know it, it's hard to put into context but it's just my friend is under the assumption that her her party is like the correct and absolute truth like right right choice and i think when you come from that angle of like hey let me convert you over to the correct party it's kind of like if someone tried to come to me and and convert me to christianity i feel very uncomfortable because you're trying to like essentially tell me what what i feel is wrong and that your way is the right way without properly giving me any context as to why I should believe that based off of my personal current worldview. Yeah. So it's like the the, the results are not going to be very good. They're going to vary very widely uh, when you come from that angle of just like, let me save you from yourself. That's very yeah, condescending. Well, let me tell you why you're wrong. Right. And it, But it sucks because you don't know how to, like you, you feel like someone's doing something or saying something that is the wrong thing. Uh, and while I, I tend to agree with most of what my friend talks about, um, like we tend to align a lot on, on certain viewpoints, it's still important to realize that to somebody else that doesn't have the same context and, and point of view as you, you're you're coming off to them as the the know-it-all or the holier-than-thou, or like you're coming off in a way that d- does not make them inclined to want to accept your worldview as their worldview. Yeah. Whatever the topic may be, it may be something stupid and petty and small, but uh, <laughs> if you guys are able to debate on something stupid and petty and small, like more than likely the viewpoints or maturities probably not super high, at least not in that specific topic. So, yeah, I think I just I see a lot of that. I see a lot of people trying to save their friends and family, and I I just I get it, but. I feel like people don't know how to have a productive conversation with their family. And I understand that from the personal point of view because I know that it's very, very challenging to do that with my own uh, parents. So there are certain topics that I will shut them down on or they will shut me down on because it'll turn into an argument because neither of us can come to a point of view uh, on the topic. Uh, We'll get too heated. And so it's like those aren't as important as losing the connection to somebody important to me. So I'm going to find a way to compromise as long as they're not doing anything that goes against my ethics. I think them having their own worldview uh, is less like them having a worldview that offends me is less important than just appreciating the time that I have with them. Now, everyone's situation is different. Uh, I know my dad has done some things that I still think are wrong. Uh, I've seen him do some things, but... uh, and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to ever like tell somebody else to forgive somebody else because everyone has their own experience and I, I think it's something that everyone else has to come to their own conclusion but I found for me forgiveness of like people doing terrible things has been way more cathartic and more productive because I've realized that 
people older than me can still mature and grow and learn from their their failings as well um, yeah so yeah I, I think that it's 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 hard to try to convert somebody from that angle but i think when you focus on the important stuff because may, maybe that disagreement isn't what's really important but you're just focusing in on it because it's like it's so in your face all the time that like this is the right way of thinking you know media and, and influencers are all saying this thing that you're supposed to believe and it's supposed to be like so important that you just can't accept people who don't believe it or, or don't buy into that same point of view or whatever it may be uh i i think it's getting to a point to where like now we're you know we're getting to that point in america where we're doing it more than i think we should be that's healthy for a country uh it's not how you fix the issue um and if you think it's a big enough issue to let someone you care about go uh maybe it's equally as important to put more effort into trying to solve the problem and like working together or finding a solution or something like that rather than like just ghosting your friends and family i don't know sometimes it's hard you can't fix somebody else but like trying to understand where they're coming from at the very least will help you make a better plan so it's like even from a selfish standpoint again if you understand somebody else and the way they think you can usually come up with a better solution for like the challenge that you're having i don't know just the tactics yeah. don't make sense to me in what America's doing right now. What tactics? <laughs> uh, not tactics. Um, the way we're communicating. The way we're communicating ah. right now with each other. With people who disagree with us. That don't um, buy into the same philosophies that we buy into. But some of them are getting yeah. pretty extreme. You know? Some of the people? S uh, or some yeah. of the, uh... the... Some of the situations are getting pretty extreme. Like... Uh, uh, racial inequality or police brutality I think yeah. people are still able to de debate how much it happens but it it, I, mm, it's pretty hard for me to deny that there's a lot of evidence in the mainstream right now that shows that there is um, definitely some issues with police training police ethics because so, even if you didn't look at that person as a black person like if it was a white person that's still not ethical you know the whole uh george floyd situation like i i don't believe yeah. that would be ethical for any human being the fact that it was a, a black person um is also pretty terrible and pretty damning evidence as well because of how often we catch that kind of stuff um i know there's like the devil's advocate in me wants to argue the fact that you know there are people who argue that statistics of you know it happening to white people as well that doesn't make me feel better there's still no, a problem no. <laughs> there's still a problem like so, okay yeah. like no they're doing yeah. it to white people equally okay so wouldn't you be just as inclined to fix the the, the bad cops that are doing these things like is that really yeah. a good argument to me like in my mind that's not a great argument for no it's not. <laughs> police it's, it's, it's like it's like if i said uh <laughs> if i if let's say you and i are partners in a business right yeah like we both we own half of a of a pizza shop and i come up to you and i said hey samantha's been stealing and you said well she's only been stealing your half so it's not that big a deal you know what i mean it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no! So not not even entirely that. that I can it, see people believing that. I can see people thinking that way. So not I, I think I said it wrong. So it's like it's not it's not that she's been stealing your half. Oh, she steals from me too. So what, what are you gonna fire? Are you gonna fire everybody because they steal a little bit? You know what I mean? Like a few bad apples. Oh yeah. Like, oh, both are equally what, bad and both are equally believable yeah yeah I, it, it came out weird the first time which you know i'm not mad about it because it, <laughs> it was kind of funny <laughs> <laughs> but I like think about it but you get my point is like people think that the cons i don't know what the problem is honestly people feel like they're gonna lose some rights over it. <laughs> it it it's like people think that just because when black people were able to vote 
that now their vote counts as less or something some weird shit like that well yeah that like, was the case three-fourths of a vote well no no so like it like say say someone who's opposed to black lives someone that says all lives matter mm -hmm. well yeah of course but they're not the ones that are not all lives that are being targeted but even with okay so let's 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 say that yes all lives matter <laughs> that's the same thing so we were stop, talking about yeah let's like, stop ending ending them that let's cop's stop. not racist he's just corrupt <laughs> ah i see yeah yeah he's not <laughs> racist. He, he murders everyone <laughs> you know like oh my bad i thought it was just me <laughs> i thought he was just racist okay <laughs> <sighs> yeah that's that's what it feels like sometimes that's a hilarious way of looking at it oh man sad though sad that we're having to joke about this sort of stuff yeah <laughs> uh, i'm glad to find some humor in this to be honest <laughs> like, uh i need to i need, we need to find some comedian friends that'd be mm. good yeah find benji again that dude was hilarious he's uh he's in florida yeah <laughs> i wonder who he, oh, i wonder no. how he's feeling right now so he uh, have you seen any of the posts that are saying like, "Oh, what's what's there to do in Florida? Like, is there any good museums or art or anything?" No. And then and then they show like a map of like how the voting lines. They're like, "Yeah, just go to the blue states, any of the blue states, or blue areas." Ah, uh, oh. So I don't know if you've noticed. Um, it seems it's not even really red versus blue. It's more so city versus country. Is what it seems like what do you mean well like most of the bigger cities seem to be coming up blue states or blue uh uh blue in the election versus red and it's like way the rural rural areas that are more coming out in the red hmm okay so this since this is for academic purposes i'm going to look at the polls not to find out who's winning but to learn yeah, something it's, it's not going to change until it's going to take a while i don't expect this to yeah. fix anytime soon oh, how do i full screen this oh interesting i see what you're saying yeah so like if you look at the map it's like mostly like the where Whoa, there's what? a dense population it's like mostly blue this doesn't make sense because virginia looks like if you look at Virginia, it's Democrat, but um, it's, I mean it's Biden, but it it when you click on it and it shows who went where, that doesn't even make sense. How how uh how it, <laughs> July how one? Forced? Yeah. Uh, well, it's because those are the densely populated areas. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we can take that into account. That does make it make sense. You know, that's nuts. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. The electoral college system is really weird. Like, I want Biden to win, so I'm not really upset about that right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a fan of. Well, I don't want Donald Trump to win. I'll just say that. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to hate on people who want Trump to win. I'm not going to like bash him. Uh, I just he scares me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> I'll be honest about that. I don't like the state of the world since uh, that man took control. I don't. I absolutely don't. Yeah, Ohio is uh, very clear. Uh, Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, Toledo, Cleveland. Same thing with Indiana, Indiana Indianapolis. That's like the main one. wonder why that is. What, the cities versus the country? Well, the state, city versus the state, I guess. Ohio is very much like that. Um, West Virginia went completely red. That's... I don't know. That's... Look, yeah. Look! Look yeah. at Florida, like every major city. Yeah, it's blue, and the whole rest of it is is red. I don't know. That's odd that it would. Well, no, I guess it makes sense. It makes sense because those are the most diverse of of people, probably because they're destination spots. Yeah, so, and they're a, it's a city. It's not like, uh, you know, my neighbor, my only other neighbor is Jimbo, and maybe it's where the Yankees hang out. Trump flag, front yard. 
Yeah, Michigan's very much like that. Michigan is like a very red state. It seems it feels like, like there's a lot of like Trump supporters here, uh, and it's it feels a little bit like Alabama but colder, in the sense of the mindset of people. It's just, it's like it's different. I don't know how to explain how it's different, but it's different. But um, it still does have this vibe of of Alabama, of how people yeah. like have political views. So if, did you look at the um, the way it? Played out. You got Grand Rapids, Lansing, Detroit, and Flint. Mm -hmm. All blue. And then well, I don't know what that other one is, but like you can see the big, the main points seem to be pretty blue. Um, have you heard about the people ch like chanting stop the vote or stop the count? I've heard both. Yeah. Stop the count and count everything. Oh, yeah. That's an, actually a really good topic. Yeah. I have heard that. What are you gonna say about it? Uh, well, that it, you know, it just seems very um, what uh, hypocritical amongst the the group. So, like in one state where he's winning, they want to stop the count, but in a state where he's not winning, they want to count everything. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, it, and even want to recount. <laughs> you know, it's like it's ridiculous. To me, it's very telling that people want to stop counting votes for some reason yeah like you think because there's some arbitrary date because the, the sun went down we're supposed to stop counting ballots like, i don't understand the logic that they have like what mental gymnastics do you have to be doing to think that just because the sun went down and the day ended you, you're not allowed to count any more ballots uh people's people's votes uh it, it i just don't get it yeah, let me um, let me send you an image. So this was something that was also disturbing. This is an email coming from the Trump campaign to his supporters, I guess. The Democrats will try to steal this election, just like I just like I predicted from the from the start. Mail-in ballots are leading to chaos like you've never seen. Plain and simple. The radical left is going to do whatever it takes to try and rip a Trump Pence victory away from you, and that's why I'm coming to you now. Huh. I need your help to ensure we have the resources to protect the results. We can't allow the left wing mob to under undermine the election. I'm asking my fiercest and most loyal defenders like you <laughs> to fight back. <laughs> uh, it's in all caps and exclamation mark. Uh, step up immediately and increase your impact by 1,000%. Please contribute any amount right now to defend the integrity of our election and try to increase your impact by 1,000%. What? Wait, that last part made it so stupid. <laughs> I'm asking my fiercest and most loyal defenders like you to fight back. Like, that's... Uh, I mean... That's like uprising speak. Those are fighting words. <laughs> you yeah. literally have fight as a word there that's that's you trying to incite violence he's not respecting the what is the word i'm looking for he, he's making this look like it's some sort of combative competition rather than a symbiosis of groups of different ways of thinking that are trying to make this country better like he's actively turning this into a damn contest rather than trying to turn this into something where we work together. Like that's why he doesn't, I think that's part of the why he doesn't like the UN. Um, he doesn't like um, the, the Paris agreements. Uh, he, anything that uh, anything that involves working with other groups of countries and stuff like that, he's tried to pull us out of. Like the Paris Accords and making things better. He actively does not want to make things better. It's kind of uh, frustrating to the way he speaks about everything just proves that he's not trying to make things better as a country or as a world <laughs> he's just trying to win and I, I don't know what that i don't know what he's trying to win per se like what he wants what his end game is but it it's not our best interest i i truly believe that he's not in our best interest like i can say that now since the voting is already done uh because i'm not trying to influence anybody's vote but i do want to share my thoughts now that we don't have to worry about who wins and who loses yeah, I mean, it's out of our control at this point, right? Mm -hmm. like, there's nothing that we can do to influence it. Yeah. So, yeah, to your point, um, that doesn't necessarily prove that anything about the uh, 
I oh stop the vote stop the vote yes yeah yeah, yeah. so for those who may not know there are I, I think there's liberals and conservatives doing something of of this sort but there are people uh, mainly Republican chanting stop the vote for like Trump supporters like from what from the perspective that I've seen from the little bit of media that I've I've taken in uh there's basically conservatives trying to just across the board stop voting like stop more votes coming in just period and then it's the opposite for liberals like that's that's kind of how the information was given to me so clearly like we're getting fed different information because our points of views are like different on it that's again like I know you're someone who's just as rational as I am um so our information sources must be different and like giving us different information uh and who knows which one is like the most accurate right uh, or maybe like sometimes they're just not giving all the information, partial information, whatever they want to talk about. Anyways, like it's to me, it's very telling that people want to stop that vote. Uh, to kind of circle back to that, uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're, we're basically. I finished my thoughts on that, but just I still can't believe that there's a logic out there of people who, for some reason, want to stand outside in scare people to stop scare America to stop voting or or influence America to stop voting with their picketing whatever it is they're trying to do to stop counting ballots like we're in a pandemic uh, we're trying to do things safely it, like it's really hard to do this in a quick manner in this pandemic where we don't want to have a lot of people but we're still exposing ourselves but also because these people don't really respect the uh, the realness of COVID you know they're like it's, it almost they almost feel like flat earthers to me like that's how how it feels right now is that we're fighting with flat earthers uh yeah. and i'm not trying to be disrespectful to people who are no mask but it, i i just i think there's far too much information out there already and there's far too many people already wearing masks to see them as dangerous uh and and maybe a mild inconvenience but potentially can help in not getting other people sick so you have those same people just everywhere trying to vote in person um spreading this around also picketing um at people who are counting ballots so people the people who are counting ballots have to be exposed to these people chanting their their banter you know spraying their their uh, germs everywhere you know <laughs> like the chances of other people getting it goes up exponentially at least in my mind maybe that like outside maybe there's just no chance of getting it outside but um I, I don't know the full extent of the situation. I just know there's large groups of people meeting with no masks, uh, trying to stop people from counting votes. And it's like, it, that, that whole sequence of information just doesn't add up to me that this is yeah. our reality. Uh, I, I don't understand what issue they have. Like, I mean, I guess they're so non-trusting of the government, uh, of the electoral process, that they want to stop people from counting because they don't want Biden to be in office. But I, I just why those are people's votes that you're stopping yeah. that haven't gotten there yet. What's the problem? How's it not uh, fair? So the problem is that it, it goes against their team. And so it, so there's two parts to this problem. Mm-hmm. Part one is that those ballots seem to be biased towards Biden, like the ones that are coming in through the mail seem to be like they like there's some statistics on it about like huge percentage of those go to biden guess why because trump told his supporters not to mail in vote he told them you know what i mean like it's like yeah. why well that, that's what i believe and that's what you believe but like what are they being told you know like what is the general public being told because i don't think every normal individual that's doing this is being told the right information you know because i yeah I, they're not all crazy but they're acting crazy <laughs> like they they they're under the assumption it's like it's is it very much reminds me of or go ahead doesn't add up what it reminds you of what it reminds me of i gotta think about this like i got there's an analogy that i have here and i want to make sure i get it right um these people are in a completely different bubble of information than us. So their belief systems are just vastly different to the point to where they are now a danger 
or we feel they are a danger. There's like a small percentage of a chance they're right where like this isn't as big of a deal as it really is. Like I'm willing to ad admit that's a potential outcome, but it's like 5% for me of, of possibility. Uh, that's how I feel about the situation personally. On their side, okay. it's like, nah, we're like 90% sure that we're going to be, you know, it's all good. You know, you get it for a couple days, you're okay. You just, you know, you walk it off. No big deal. Uh, they, that is, there's information. They're being constantly fed that reinforces that mindset, right? It's not some sort of paranoia thing. It's just the media gives them that information. Like you, you can see the clips. You can see all the, the, the Hannity and, and Tommy Lahren and all these other people. They're saying it, and they have millions of followers. And that's not that's not the issue. It's just that that information is clear. It's clearly happening where the general public is being given information that uh, is causing them to act in a way that is a danger to society. Uh, I think you know they don't think that way. They think it's okay. They think it's safe. Their belief system is just way different. They're going to act way different. So now they think that we're the crazy ones, right? At least that's how I see it. They think that we're the crazy ones. We're overreacting about this. It's not that big of a deal. And you're willing to lose your rights for something that's not a big deal. Because uh, you have to admit, you the quarantine, the lockdown causes you to lose certain rights temporarily. Uh, that is not misinformation. That is a fact. Your rights have been taken away for the safety of the American country. That's the reality that we have been in, um, that we are in to um, some degree. But, so, but well, let me ask you, what, what right though? You know, what I mean, like, what have you been told that you can't do outside of amassing in large groups? I can't work. I can't do uh, my well, job. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. People, there's like, I mean, that's the thing is like, a lot of people have lost their ability to do their job. Hey, Future Tavian here, just to clarify real quick. The rights that were taken away weren't me losing my job. It was the inability to meet in large groups of more than about 50 or so people. Uh, my job was hosting tournaments and having events in person with esports, and so I was not allowed to do that, uh, thus basically rendering my job useless. Uh, also, I host tournaments for myself for the FGC as well, so I do that in a free time. Uh, so I'm not able to do what I love to do as well. I didn't clarify that too well in this podcast, and I just wanted to jump in there just to clarify what rights are actually being taken away. Uh, again, not a big deal, but wanted to clarify. All right, back to the show. Because their bosses couldn't do certain things. So it's not just me that can't that lost my rights. My bosses lost their rights. And it's like, I'm not mad or anything like that or offended, but like... Uh, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, there are certain liberties that you cannot do because it is a danger to everybody else. I get it and I respect it and I think it was the right thing to do. We should have did it sooner. However, I feel like there's a lot of people on the left side that deny that that is the reality of, like that is the fact of the matter. There are certain rights you have to forgo for freedom. I, I think, you know, you could argue wearing a mask. I, I don't think that's a big deal as like one of the whole rights that people argue. Um, because in the FGC, you do that. If you're sick, you bring a mask. It's not a big deal. It's a common courtesy. Like, I don't get it. It's, it's a piece of cloth. Doctors wear them all the time. Like, it's not going to kill you. It's only going to potentially help it. What is the big deal? I'm tangenting. But anyways, yeah, so it's just like, it seems like people aren't willing to admit certain realities. And so, like, both parties look crazy to the other person. Uh, because, again, like, while I'm okay with the liberties that were taken away for our safety, um, you know, a lot of conservatives aren't okay with it and also don't see this as a big deal. So, like, you think about that logic and it's like, okay, so then from their point of view, we're like these fanatical people who are just, like, ultra paranoid of some... Uh, made-up scary bad monster from the Chinese communist like I don't I don't know the I don't know the exact like loophole but like the they see the people who believe that masks and this whole sickness is are the crazy ones while we're so like to I, make them feel like they're, they're, they're crazy ones honestly I feel like they're people that never got to use a microscope you know what I mean like I feel like <laughs> that's that's the group of people that we're we're talking about is the people that they would be the same people that would deny the existence of germs before we had a microscope in the first place you that happened like yeah yeah and oh I know man there were doctors that. oh man yeah 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 go ahead and and that i think that that's the same mindset and the same 
I agree. Group group of people that we're that we're talking about is just they don't they can't fathom a world outside of their own head out of their own head. Yeah, I almost feel like feels like there's a history of this revolving door of kicking out closed-minded people out of places of power and that being a, a constant struggle you know it, it just seems like yeah. history has always had to happen where it's like it's a struggle to get certain facts as a reality it's like why is this so hard to be acceptable and it's because there's people working against it like the sugar industry we talked about that a long time ago the um you know the the lead industry how that you know just it, there's a lot of people that are doing things and we uh on one side people are just convinced because they have been given information that makes them believe otherwise so it's like the general public can't be completely at fault but at the same time they don't do their own free thinking to see what's right in front of them you know it's like none of this is this stuff is like surprising to me like police brutality isn't surprising to me you know like but it's it's been it's you guys not when I say you guys when I, a lot of the majority of America didn't know about this kind of stuff and yeah. now a lot of them are just burying their heads in the sand and like doubling down on their small minded point of view and I, I do I hate to say it but I do feel like a lot of them are you know the, the people who you know I, I said flat earthers but it's just like people who are closed minded thinkers who aren't willing to adapt to new information you so know? It, I, I feel like there's a new war on science is, is, well, yeah. is the, way, the way I feel it, is what's going on people people don't like what they can't understand and science is hard mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it's there's there's stuff in there there's stuff in there that I don't understand I don't deny I, you know I don't I don't, say I don't understand wrong. it must be magic yeah I don't uh, de the devil <laughs> yeah I've heard people say stuff like that and yeah. uh, again i'm not trying to judge them because it's like if they want to believe in magic they can believe in magic monsters like that's okay but there's if there's already information proving something and, and you can like back up that and like prove it and show it i it is hard for me to deny that information um and but also like with more abstract stuff like culture and accepting new people it's like i don't necessarily have to understand everything for them to have their own liberties as long as mine aren't being taken away you know as long as you're not taking away my liberties um in a way that appeads on my ability to live my life without you know as long as i'm not inconveniencing somebody else and there are times where that needs to be a conversation uh, not with any specific group but just in general we should always be cautious of like how we set ourselves up you know um, for future generations and, and stuff like that but it has to be a consistent conversation i think there's things that are there's not necessarily a right answer it's an evolving answer because we're maturing as a culture and it's like well, so tough to to solve these issues but we're just not we're fighting over it rather than discussing it again it's that uh what about me what about you know it, it, there's no room for anything that exists outside of me so I'm not even going to listen to you until you direct your attention to me personally. You know, like what, what's in it for me? What, uh, my rights are being taken away too? all, all this sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a, mm -hmm. it, it's just selfishness, honestly. It really is. And, and people's worldviews are really, really skew that. And they, they want policies in place based off of what they want and sometimes rights and policies and things that get corrupted or taking advantage of or, or loophole to where you can still you know do terrible things to other groups of people uh and take you know lose not maybe, maybe not have them lose their rights but i'll make them less fortunate you know kind of screw them over like what i was talking about with losing my job i'm upset it happened but there's nobody in like my workspace that i'm like immediately furious at for doing this because they were put in a situation where they had to let go uh, probably hundreds close to thousands of people so i was just one of those thousands of people and i i, yeah. I get that because you you can't do things um then you can't do them and why are you paying somebody for it right but uh there are times outside of pandemics where stuff like this happened that have happened 
uh, that yeah. were less justifiable, but nobody gets punished for it. Or if they yeah. do, it's under wraps, not in the public, so that like the people know about it and they don't lose their, their status or anything like that. Or if they do, they still get um, a nice cushion to fall on. Yeah. Forced into retirement. Oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's not... That's not a, a conspiracy theory. That's not crazy talk. That happens on a regular basis in, in government. That's disappointing to me. Um, and I, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, I feel like we should be definitely in a non-pandemic world have already been prioritizing how do we have better leadership because I think we after the, the way this was handled we clearly are immature and don't know how to handle this kind of stuff we cannot come together and fix this issue we, cl- we clearly cannot come together and fight an outside entity if that ever happened uh, or, or handle that situation we're going to be very divided we are very divided and that's very unfortunate that that's the reality that we live in so I think that we need to find leadership that doesn't cause this kind of divide like the divide is so bad and so violent uh, would he claim I feel like he would claim that I have had the most violent division of voters ever you know it's just like this this craziness that he'd be proud of how how angry we are at one another I feel like like that, that's how it makes me feel like he wanted us to be this angry at each other so that we like treat our points of views like religion and want to fight this holy war of <laughs> of a COVID-19 I don't know it's crazy yeah mm. clearly I'm very like frustrated and mad about it I try I try really hard not to be uh, negative and complain about stuff and I didn't want this to be that but I think still it's hard it's hard not to say these things from my point of view um, I think one thing I do I do definitely want to say for people who do listen to share their thoughts you know if you're if you're angry or mad or sad that's fine um, if you're you know angry or offended by something I said explain why you know I'd love to know what I said specifically that is offensive and, and why it's offensive and giving me an opportunity to uh, not argue but give you my point of view in response I think that's way more beneficial than just arguing uh, or, or just insulting or name calling you know, that, that's always going to happen that's always something to expect but not everybody has to be that person but yeah any any other thoughts you want to share I think that uh, pretty much sums it up uh, like everyone's frustrated right now Depend- doesn't matter which side you're on it's, like it's it's frustrating to know that we're so torn apart right now. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, this can uh, turn to something better. Yeah. Hopefully. Maybe, just maybe, this will help us step away from the two party system. Mm-hmm. Or in, in a way that, like, um, I, f- I forget what the there's some form of voting that gives you like a, a backup choice like your backup option I forget what it is but you have like your first choice like okay uh, so you could you could vote libertarian or you could vote third party and if that, that candidate didn't win then your then your vote would go to the next you know what I mean like it's it would uh, yeah. let you can't think of the name of it but I feel like one of the biggest things that needs to happen is we need to get away from the two party system yeah you and I have been talking about that since college actually isn't yeah. that that's the two party paradigm is. yep I have believed that for a very long time and I, I don't want to rant or uh, I don't not rant I don't want to go off on a tangent on about it right now uh, but I, I did record like two or three podcasts before this where I, I deleted them but uh, I, I went off on a tangent about about the election system and definitely the two-party paradigm 
But uh, in short, that isn't helping, clearly. Uh, we need something better than a two-party paradigm. We need something that's going to help us be more productive, uh, more unified, rather than uh, dividing us. Because that's not what we want. Right. So. Yeah, we, we don't need something that's going to make it worse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope we eventually realize that. You know, or, or try to help spread. I'm, I'm trying my best to spread the word. Like, that's one of the reasons I do podcasts is to try to share ideas and hopefully people will learn and grow from them because we need less of the name calling and insulting and more of coming up with solutions and talking about ideas and having healthy debates uh, with people who disagree and trying to find a solution that meets both requirements. Like, that, that should be the requirement is that it hits multiple people's demands rather than just one party's needs you know i don't know maybe i'm asking too much but with that i'm going to end this conversation once again guys thank you so much for the continued support it's been hard to get these podcasts out there but i'm doing the best i can and honestly i'm talking about topics that i think are way more important to me right now uh, so stay tuned for more on that thank you guys so much for the continued support thank you to some guy for joining me on this podcast and keeping me calm uh, during these trying times uh, this was recorded the night of the election or the night after the election where things were still being figured out so that's why i'm talking the way i'm talking because there was still ambiguity as to who actually won the presidency but thank you so much uh, make sure you check show notes i'll try to put any resources that i can if i find any um and uh yeah i'll see you all in the next one